So here we go. It makes you feel like there's a village that's moving things forward. That feels good. It feels good to know that there are more and more of us. If you change the players in the room, you change the tenor of the conversation or what issues you talk about. And I think that's exciting, that we are leaders, that we are innovators, that we are all of the flavors you can possibly imagine of an integral movement that is essential to have if we're to protect this planet. We're going to be our full black selves. We're going we're gonna to embrace all the things that we are. action is driving the climate movement because every tactic the climate movement uses comes from the history of civil rights it comes from the work of human rights what does this all have to do with a green bank it works at the intersection of solving the problem of sustainability and equity it allows folks who would never venture into let's say affordable housing more in a more scaled fashion the willingness to do that because the city is putting more skin in the game if you look at the fossil fuel infrastructure, the 2.4 million miles of pipeline, they run through low-income white land, they run through farmer's land, they end up in black and brown communities on the Gulf Coast. So if we had paid attention to the injustices that were happening for decades, we wouldn't have the same level of problems that we currently have today. But the beauty is we finally are getting to a point now where people are beginning to come together. Well, what we want to do with the Taking Nature Black Conference every year is showcase the diversity of talent, the diversity of expertise, the diversity of experiences that African Americans have with the environment. So it was really important to show farmers, to show advocates, to show educators, to show park rangers, to show young people, to show the National Aquarium and the programs that they offer. I'm from Baltimore. I came through the education programs at the National Aquarium. So it was really important for me to come back and work here where I felt like I could give back to my people in a way that allowed me to intersect the environment and nature and what I care about for people in Baltimore. When we're thinking about why there aren't more people of color in the field, we haven't calculated the cost of being a person of color in environmental fields. It does mean a lot of times getting paid less, social alienation, the expectation to behave in a manner that conforms with the rest of the field. And this all goes unarticulated when we're talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Success is often based on your ability to tell your story. And all too often we don't tell our story. You understand that the person who's able to tell that story the best is a project that gets funded. And so just as I started to do this work, I started to see, oh man, it's food justice, environmental justice, and I'm sort of like one of those people that were like in the middle of it, right? Our Code Green um, Youth Garden Curriculum teaches kids from A, they can start from actually building the raised beds, to adding the soil, the compost, the planting, and to the, my favorite part, taking a product that they grow and taking it to market. I was a tree hugger, and I used to do that in front of kids just for shock value, because I didn't mind hugging a tree. But I would notice over time, because I spent more time with these kids and I was focused on affective learning, which is feelings, they would start to hug the tree because they liked me. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't about what I was telling them, it was about how, like they've heard that quote, about how I made them feel. But we have so much social capital in these communities where it really doesn't have to do with your race. It has to do with how you treat people. It makes me feel like I'm a part of a larger village than it felt like before, you know. Um, to be able to see myself and other people, younger people from other places. And uh, so when you come into this village of people who look like you, sound like you, care about the same things you care about, it's just invigorating too. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the 2020 Taking Nature Black Environmental Champions. Would you please come up? Our Youth 2020 Environmental Champion, ladies and gentlemen, Jerome Foster. I stand here not speaking for myself, but for the people all around the world that are at the front line of this crisis. I stand here representing young people who feel that we've been marginalized because people aren't listening to the facts, but now we're making our voices heard. 2019 was the year when so many people heard about the climate crisis, but 2020 has to be the year for climate action. 
We really go all over Southern Maryland just trying to make change. We do two things, teach people about our waterways and um, teach people about how to be healthier and how to grow their own food. The one most important thing I want people to take away from this experience is a feeling that our future is in good hands. Uh, we have some young people at this conference who are incredibly dynamic, uh, who are committed to the movement. I think this affects my work greatly. I mean, just, just being able to leave this experience and going back and having conversations with my colleagues about, about the movement. We were founded back in 1929 by some forward-thinking black Americans who uh, wanted to be able to take their kids and family to the beaches and waters. We're right next to a power plant, and uh, that right there creates its own set of unique problems. We have to get along with them. They're not going anywhere. But what I've found that's very important is to have that conversation on a regular basis on what's going on. We got the children involved. Then we got the community involved. And we got the churches involved. And so sometimes it's just one person that can start something. So each one of y'all can just start something. You can go to your council. You can be the fire starter. You can decide that you want this to happen. I was, I was too connected to this. I was going crazy and I said, yo, I gotta get outside. And I went for a walk. And that walk turned into 10 walks and now it's 304 walks. And it's just one mile a day. That's all I say is one mile a day. We start simple to get people outside. But because our farm is right next to, to the farm that my great grandparents owned. So the land is contiguous and we just walk off of one piece onto the other piece and that's a blessing. And Harriet Tubman came to this property and she uh, was able to get her parents out of Maryland from Poplar Neck Road and Marsh Creek Road. It's called Afroecology. And we're looking to kind of reconnect people back to the land and figure out ways that more black people can, can buy land and, and we can create a rural to urban connection to get people back on the land and, and really tap into to the healing power of nature. A successful future for our region and our nation relies on a rich and diverse pool of scientists, environmentalists, and educators. I know we're going to use this conference to make great things happen. I think it's essential that, that all of us uh, join together to create an inclusive learning environment for persons from all backgrounds, especially those who have been historically excluded. Thank you for all that you do and all that you stand for. Put your hands together, y'all. Go ahead and clap. Her. She's Come giving on. you the, it's all right. the guidelines. This is the place where you're supposed to clap. Yeah. And don't, don't, say, don't, don't. Don't, don't, don't. Hey, hey, don't, hey. Don't, hey. Don't, don't, don't. I'm going to lay down my burden. Down by the riverside. Come on. Down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. I'm going to lay